Uh, Dr. Hitchens, uh, quick question is uh, truth real? <laughs> and if so, how do you determine it? Excuse me, uh, it's my fault. I stepped on your line. Would you mind repeating your question? It was brief, I think. So. Do, is truth real? Does it exist? And is if so, how do you determine it? Once more. Is truth real? And if so, how do you determine ah. it? Okay, well, having attacked relativism on purpose, I should maybe uh, specify precisely what I meant. It, to say, huh, it's a famous line, as you know, what is truth asked a jesting conscious pilot and did not stay for an answer? Well, it's a, it's a long stay if you do stay for it. I mean, what, what I believe to be the case is that the, there is a difference between fair-mindedness, um, impartiality, even-handedness and objectivity, which is the search for the truth and the willingness to say that upon coming upon an uncomfortable truth, if it was at one's own expense, it meant one had to change one's own opinion or analysis, one, one would be um, obliged to do so. That's what objectivity means. And I think that while the, the grail of truth may not be entirely attainable, without the idea of it, um, and without the obligation to seek it uh, very intensely and, and, and very seriously, one would be in a rudderless world, a world without true north, if you like. Uh, but the, uh, as Rabbi Hillel says, um, the, the, um, you, the task may be unattainable, but that does not mean you can give it up. Rabbi Hillel, by the way, who is the author of the Golden Rule, which the Christians so often claim to be their own. Uh, wrongly, falsely, lyingly. Um, and doubly falsely, actually, because the obligation to love others as yourself is an unattainable one. And it's sinister for that reason, because you're demanded, it's demanded of you that you, that you do the impossible. Thus you'll always be falling short, thus you'll always be in sin, thus you'll always be guilty, thus you'll always have to confess, thus you'll always be in the claws of the priests. Um, that's the trick, as, uh, as it's said by Fulk Greville, you're created sick and commanded to be well. This is a sadomasochistic relationship with the dictator. You can't be right. You'll always be wrong. The law is such as you can't keep it. Whereas the, the relatively sane uh, injunction of the Babylonian rabbi at least, is, is what is repulsive to another, no, sorry, what is repulsive to you, you should not do to another. That's a decent rule. But no one, no one had better stand up and tell me that I need a God to tell me that. Peter, did you want to respond? Okay, we have a question up in the balcony. Yes, this is a question for Professor Hitchens again. Um, doctor. Do <laughs> doctor, fair enough. On your, uh, your website and in the, your books, uh, Build Up That Wall, you mention um, the eliminating taxation, freedom of taxation for churches. And I was wondering what your thoughts were as to how that might, if we were to someday do something like that, how that might affect the separation of church and state that we enjoy right now? Well, um, it seems to me a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment that any religious institution can receive any payment from the United States government. I would regard being tax exempt or tax free as a disguised form of subsidy, as I regard the so-called faith-based initiative to be a surreptitious violation of the same... I should say for sincere believers that um, there is a, there's an excellent reason why the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment was first proposed. It wasn't proposed just by people like myself who, who wouldn't go any further than deism in their attitude to religion. It was proposed by many people who were quite devout and who thought not just that the government must not be corrupted by religion but that the churches mustn't be corrupted by the association with the state either. And I think that's an equally morally valid point. Uh, James Madison, 
the co-author of the Virginia Statute on Religious Freedom and, and of the First Amendment and the other things that bodyguard our, 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 our uh, wonderful Republican secular constitution, didn't think there should be chaplains to open Congress, didn't even think there should be chaplains in the armed forces. If you want to pray in the army, they can. No one can stop them. But we're not going to pay for someone to pray over them. These are very uh, tough questions, but it must be understood that these were part of the very urgent views of the framers and the founding fathers, and it's our responsibility to be discussing this very seriously now at a time when Hillary Clinton has joined some reactionary uh, evangelical organization. John McCain, to try and b bolster her faith-based connections, John McCain, a lifelong Episcopalian, has this year, I wonder why, said he's a Baptist. <laughs> And uh, Barack Obama, Senator Obama, has been caught in some big mouth, sinister, windbag, rock and roll horror show church on the south side. <laughs> religion, religion, is poisoning, religion is poisoning our election and our democratic republic, and it's time <laughs> that we've said enough. If you, want to be, if you want to be a fraud and a fundraiser and a, and a shakedown artist and a big mouth and an ethno-racist in this country, try your best. But it's, in, it's long past time that we said putting reverend in front of your name is not enough of an achievement to do that. We sort of agreed uh, 200 or so years ago that... Um, we in Britain would not intervene in United States politics, and I, I feel I should <laughs> up, uphold this tradition. But there is one small point here. There's a tremendous air of challenge and bravery and, uh, and uh, hurling uh, himself into a storm of rage and oppression uh, in all this stuff. Uh, and I have to say, I do not find the Christian churches, either in this country, uh, and especially not in my own particularly terrifying force to combat, or one which is capable of crushing a dissenter. However, I would challenge him, for instance, to uh, wage any kind of campaign of dissent against the dreadful tyranny uh, of, uh, for instance, the theory of man-made global warming, against which it is almost death to speak uh, if you wish to be in any kind of public life in either this country or mine. But I don't think he will, because that requires a little bit more in the way of, how shall I say? No, I won't say it. Well, as a matter of fact, you you know, I mean, since I, I've warned you before about this clapping business. Um, <laughs> since that's a challenge, uh, I hope you won't mind if I speak again. It's not really my turn, but I have just written a piece for, for Free Inquiry, uh, a secular atheist magazine, a contributor, a regular column, is saying that it disturbs me to see how much the green movement is taking on the um, lineaments of a religion. That, that the human species has an original sin, in other words, existing, um, <laughs> uh, making smoke, um, other things that upset the air, um, that it will be punished for this, that uh, an Armageddon or an apocalypse is on its way. Uh, that if all don't uh, understand this, that there could be terrible punishments and that there's only one true way out of it. No, I've already written that I don't like the tone of this at all. Just in case. Well, this, you don't, have to, read every, you don't have to read everything I write. You don't, but you, guys, you do. <laughs> and next time we talk, I will expect you to have read everything I've written. Okay, our next question.